Have you ever wondered how inconvenience can make your life better? That's what we'll talk about today. An adventure is only an inconvenience rightly considered. An inconvenience is only an adventure wrongly considered. G.K. Chesterton Today we're going to talk about the book, The Comfort Crisis, by Michael Easter. I had this thought a while ago about inconvenience and how good our life is right now. Do not like getting stuck in lines, waiting for things. Even I don't even enjoy shopping. It, not having to go to stores and be able to order things and have it show up on my door. Boy, I love that. During the pandemic, I nearly got addicted to Costco delivering groceries to my front door. I didn't have to go there. I didn't have to stand in line. And it cost me about 20% more. But it all showed up on my doorstep. I just grabbed it all, shoved it in my door, and it was done. I loved that. At some point, I got rid of that because of the cost. But you can see where convenience is very addictive. And it also allows us to do things that we would not have time for because someone else is doing it or it's showing up in a different way. Even for my own self, I talked about how I started using AI to write my show notes. It was taking me longer to write the show notes than it was actually to do this podcast. So instead, I started using AI just to write the show notes. So I read my transcripts of the podcast into Grammarly. It rewrites the show notes into a short pa paragraph summarizing what I'm talking about, and it looks fantastic. I even tell it to be a little bit more engaging. It's a little perkier than I am. Comes out great. Makes me invest less time. Puts me back into doing what I love doing, which is the talking part. But then I started thinking, is it helpful for us to not do things if we morally don't need it, if it's not something that's important to us, if we find it that it's not necessary? Do we have to stand in line? Do we have to do certain things? It got me thinking. I used to talk to people in like grocery store and store lines about anything. I've prayed for people. I've comforted people. I heard good jokes and good stories. I talked to someone once, and they were part of the group that went in and saved people from Holocaust camps. They saved the fellow that invented the Helvetica font. I have no idea if it's true, but it was a fantastic story. I was amazed by it. And by the fact that I don't drive long distances, I don't stand in line. I never hear those events. I also thought about it in the sense that I used to do big, long driving trips. And I, it's not that I'm against them, but I just haven't had time to do them. When I drove up to visit my mom and brother a few weeks ago, I got all this thinking done about the new job, about all sorts of things. And it was the inconvenience of having a very long drive that gave me time to have that quiet moment away from all my stuff to really think things out. I also thought about the fact that my tires were garbage and I bought new tires. But that thinking time is also a result of our inconvenience. Even lately, I've been rereading the entire series, Little House on the Prairie, and all the books associated with it. And I thought of how inconvenient their life is, how hard it was to get food, how if the crops didn't come in or bugs occurred in their crops, it was devastating. But it also meant, too, that they had family time together. They would sit around and listen to their father play music. They would sing together. It was amazing to, to see how the inconvenience of everyone being so far away made them a tight, loving family makes me wonder, at times, are we losing something by having such a convenient life? I'm a big viewer and reader of post-apocalyptic books and television shows. But in the end, aren't those shows really just about us losing our convenience? About us not having everything right at the hand? 
And how are we going to deal with that? In a lot of ways, it's a what if about convenience. But heck, we get mad if we can't get home on time, if our plane got delayed, if something happens. We lose our patience with everything nowadays. What's interesting is when I started looking at this topic and started doing some research, I noticed that the Japanese look at convenience as almost a design problem. If I buy something like ice cream cone and I can't eat it before I get out of the line, there's a design problem because it melted before I had a chance to enjoy it. Or even if there's a building and people don't flow in the proper ways and the lines get confused and suddenly no one can do the thing they're looking to do, it's a problem in how we design the building. So when they talk about inconvenience in the Japanese culture, at least these articles, they were wondering how can we design life, buildings, cars, businesses better so that they're more convenient. And isn't it true that in the end, social media is built for convenience? I can share everything with all my friends. Instead of writing one friend a letter, letting her know how things are going in my life, I can write all my friends a short post and let them all know at the same time. Much more effective, a lot less personal. But we also get to keep up with people that maybe we wouldn't be able to keep up with before. And... I even heard a coworker talking about having kids, how it's too inconvenient, too expensive to have kids right now. You know, when I was born, my parents were dirt poor. A lot of people were dirt poor. And not just kind of the poor we have right now, where we have Xboxes and cars and stuff. This was poor like you didn't have anything. You had to go and kill the chicken in your front yard because that was what you were going to eat that night. And if you didn't, there was no dinner on the table. And so in the end, people still had kids, but now we look at them, I think, as an inconvenience. Or I think about people in California. I worked with a customer that was in Beverly Hills, and most of the people, it took two hours, if not more, to drive to work. They lost four hours a day just working. And my convenience is that it took me seven minutes to drive to work. I had a very convenient life, and I loved it that way. The book talks about that there's other ways that we can lose convenience. If we lose our health, we lose our convenience. We just think about getting up and going to the store, going to the gym, walking into the movie theaters. But if we lose our health, if we lose the ability to walk, we lose that convenience and we stop being able to do it. I remember there was a news guy who had a stroke. He said that he started looking at people out his front door who were just going for a walk, something he never did. He never liked going for a walk. And now he just wished he could go for a walk anywhere. Because of the stroke, he lost his ability to go for just a simple walk. There's other times, too, at Lent where we give up our convenience. We try to deny ourselves so that we can walk in the way of Jesus. That's a big part of it, too. And in fact, they said that there's now a whole job where you make people stand in line. You can hire people to stand in line for you, to get tickets, to do all sorts of things. It's a whole line-standing occupation. Isn't that wild? I learned recently, too, that we had this strike that was lasting for months and months and months here in town. And as it turned out, they were hiring homeless people, out-of-work people, $5 $5 an hour to stand in line as picketers for the employees so the employees didn't have to spend this really hot summer and stand in line and pick it for themselves. It's really amazing. But getting back to just the inconveniences of daily life, I saw this list of modern inconveniences in our daily life and what really bugs people. And what causes frustration? And those things included Wi-Fi goes out. There's a call from someone you don't know who it is on your phone. Maybe you don't have enough room for your legs on the train or the plane or the bus. Your phone runs out of battery. Oh, these all stupid long passwords all the time. Or 
the video stops while you're watching videos. Those are our modern inconveniences that we have. And like I said, I'm not trying to poo-poo anyone, but when I read Little House on the Prairie, it was money for a roof. It was sewage. It was traveling. They said that Pa, because they lost their entire crop, had to walk to Mankato, which was 78 miles away, just to get a job. And you even wonder whether or not you're safe sleeping at night, whether or not you're going to have clean water. People barely had books. Only rich people had books. People in the past also had to deal with war or the inability to take baths. I saw this post-apocalyptic show where this guy survived some sort of apocalypse. It was meant to be a documentary, but kind of a fictional documentary about a guy and how he would survive in the apocalypse. And eventually he overcomes all these challenges only to get a cut on his arm and die from an infection. We take so much of our life for granted. I saw this video that says that if you uh, grew up in the 80s, if you had a bottle of water, we might never have had to go home. Half the time we just went home because we just needed a drink and there was nothing like the big fancy double walled bottle so we could put water in so that we could walk around with it all day. It's interesting to see how much inconvenience matters. And yet we don't ever feel like inconvenience gets better. We always think that it's just as bad. And he says in this book that part of the reason why it's always bad is when you grow up, you have this idea of what to expect from your life. And when you frame your life and what we consider to be an inconvenience or not an inconvenience, then we gauge everything based on it. So if you're back in the little house on the prairie days, you know your inconvenience might be eating, having shelter, surviving weather. And so you frame everything based on that inconvenience. But now we frame all our inconveniences without regard to any, almost any of that if we live in most places in the world. And instead, now our inconveniences are things like losing the internet. It struck me interesting that I had this friend. And most of my friends growing up in high school, we all had parents who were addicted to alcohol for the most part had problems. And we became friends as this coalition of kids who needed each other because our parents weren't necessarily there for us. And we had one friend in particular who had both her parents were still married. Both her parents weren't drug abusers or alcohol abusers, and she had a pretty good life. And I remember we went to her house one day and she said to her parents, I can't believe you scraped the fork with your teeth. I don't even know how I live in this family. And she burst into tears and stormed off. And we were all like, oh, gee, that's funny. We just kind of wish we had parents. Wouldn't that be cool if we had parents? So it was an interesting tack that we all just wished we had parents. And she just wished her parents would eat without clinking their forks on their teeth. But again, it's that framing thing that we all frame what we think is an inconvenience in our life based on how our life is going. And it's always a comparison. Whatever is mildly 10% bad for us, we tend to think of as an inconvenience. But like I said, I thought about the good side of inconvenience. Because when my life was more inconvenient, I had more time to think. I had more time to show kindness to other people around me because I saw more people in stores, in lines at the DMV. I found ways to communicate with people when I was bored. I did better about being bored. I got up and walked around more. I was more available to everyone around. It's that waiting in line, the long drives that I think in a lot of ways makes us stronger people, makes us have more compassion to the people we meet around us and gives us a sense of community. Even if it's just a bunch of people you're in line with at Target, you're all in camaraderie because there you are on a Thursday night standing in line. Gives us a sense of belonging with them. Even though we don't belong with them at all, we'll never see them again. But for that brief moment, we talked to someone and we got to know them. 
And so if we just try to hurry all the time, make our jobs more convenient, make everything more convenient. And you're talking to someone who just got a job that for the rest of my life on this job, I will work remotely. I'll never go into an office. We start making our lives sterile. He says a quote from this book that most people rarely step out of their comfort zones. We are living progressively sheltered, sterile, temperature controlled, overfed, under challenged, safety netted lives. And it's limiting the degree to which we experience safety netted lives. See, it's, it's damaging us in that sense. And so I thought about it in terms that when we keep this life that's meant to be inconvenient, the life we have is going to be inconvenient. People are an inconvenience, but that community we get. So the idea is how can we bring those things back, give ourselves time to think, get ourselves out there to be with people again, show kindness, compassion, and just have a good chat with other people or have that moment to be bored so we can generate ideas or think about the things that really matter to us. If we're always on, if we're always living our best lives because we're never having that inconvenience, figure out what we're missing. So my challenge to you is do just that. Think about the inconveniences you've avoided probably in the last five years. Is there something missing from what you're doing? Do you have less people in your life? Do you hear less from other strangers, other people? Or do you lack the time to really think things out? Pray, contemplate, write things down, because everything has just been so darn convenient. Take that information and see how you could make what you're lacking in your life a little bit better. Do you need to meet more people? Maybe you don't have to stand in line, but maybe you could take a class, join one of those painting wine things, or do something that will bring you out to people that will make your life more rich. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can subscribe at startwithsmallsteps.com. And you're always welcome to email me with ideas and thoughts and anything that you like. I'm here to help bring topics that are interesting to you. And remember that life's inconveniences can be overcome, but enjoyed by taking small steps, probably outside the door from the grocery store.